Hey folks, Clyde Lindsay here at Leechburg Lights. Thanks for taking the time to tune into the video today. Today's video is on setting up a open DMX data connection to a USB 485 adapter from your computer. And the, the hope is to output DMX data to a simple DMX RGB display. So with that, I want to direct your attention to the Leechburg Lights website. And if you open it up and go to the home page and scroll down just a little bit, and you click on the search tab, go ahead and type DMX adapter. And I have a pretty full and complete write-up on uh, testing the new DMX adapter. Now, I made this article back in January last year, and uh, unfortunately, I got hit with a ton of bricks that that took up the rest of the year and I didn't have time to finish uh, uh, following through and so this is the beginning step in catching back up with where I was last year so one of the things that I was trying to do last year was I was trying to find and you can read all about it this is a very very long article on the FTDI chip and why I was looking for it uh, and the denotation of the LEDs and so forth why uh, what I wanted to do with it basically I wanted to run a very simple DMX show uh, RGB dumb RGB or maybe even with the LOR controllers Lightarama and um, I wanted I didn't want to spend a lot of money and I found this specific adapter as you can see here I found it on spark fun and it is very very affordable if you go to sparkfun.com and then go to the search bar and search for the number 9822 that's the item number 9822 and this is the uh, RS485 to USB uh, converter and this can be used as a simple way and an inexpensive way for that matter to convert data from X lights or from LOR in an open DMX fashion out to a legacy DMX controller. Now, mostly people are using uh, DMX uh, USB uh, outputs specifically for dumb RGB, and some are using it for single universe pixel controllers. And that's what this will be, what I would use it for myself. You could also use this to control uh, LOR controllers that are set up to receive DMX in DMX mode, that is. So I purchased this, and uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and click on it. There's a couple good pictures here. This is the simple adapter. It has a um, 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 mini USB connector here, not a micro, not like for your cell phone, and not a regular USB. This is a mini. So it's like the medium size connector. And then it doesn't come with it, but it shows here that you can solder on your own RJ 45 connector right to the board. You can order it through SparkFun, I'm pretty sure. Uh, if you choose not to, you have these three outputs here. The DMX positive coming out of this adapter, this is the, uh, this is the RS-485 chip from uh, uh, FTDI, and that's the reason why I chose this adapter. The A, is, the A slot is your uh, data positive, the B slot is your data neutral or negative, and then the the G slot here is for your ground. Um, so pin 1, pin 2, and pin 7 on your RJ45 outputs are all listed right here, or are the three pins that we're con uh, concerned about whenever dealing with DMX data going to a legacy controller. So um, with that being said, I have this in my hand. Unfortunately, I can't. I don't have my camera set up. My cell phone died, so I'm uh, I'm using pictures to help you uh, help show you how to connect it up. So I have at this moment um, the USB cable, and I'm going to go ahead and connect. And maybe you'll hear it whenever I connect it. The the uh, connection to USB. And there's the connection. Now the next thing we're going to do to begin the setup process is to go in. Let's do a little search. Um, and let's type uh, device manager o or not there we go and there is our device manager let's go ahead and click on that it opened in a different screen I'll pull it down here and you'll notice that we have this section called ports com and LPT now 
I if I disconnect it, you'll see which one it is right away. It'll disappear. There you go. See, there's only three choices, and I'll plug it back in. And it's the USB serial port COM5. Now, the reason this is important is when you're dealing with USB ports and X lights, and we'll go ahead and open X lights, that whenever you are adding in, this is a USB device, and obviously this is a brand new, there's no network set up here. So this is kind of a clean way to start. When you click on Add USB, we're going to change this network type for this dongle uh, from DMX. We're going to change it to Open DMX. And uh, that's basically what we need to know is what COM port everything is connected to. So here's our port. Once again, I'll bring this down. So here's your device manager. You look here, and it says COM5. So we'll go to port, COM5, and now this DMX adapter is connected to X lights with COM5 and we're going to change this since there's nothing in here we're going to utilize we can utilize up to 512 channels maximum from this adapter and you can you can put a description in here if you want um, that's not necessary uh, and just go ahead and click OK now uh, before I do that I want to also explain it says there's a difference between these different protocols this is a network protocol there's DMX and there's open DMX DMX controllers um, or LOR or D-Lite controllers in DMX mode attach to the following dongles and they use this protocol if you have an Entech Pro if you have a Lynx DMX dongle, a DIYC RPM dongle, a DMX King uh, .com dongle, or a DIY Blinky dongle, uh, some of these I've never seen or heard of, but uh, if you have one of these, you need to use the DMX output protocol. We're using Open DMX, and this is basically for a DMX controller or LOR or D Light controllers in DMX mode. Attached to an LOR dongle, a D Light dongle, a Holiday Coral programming cable, or an Entech Open DMX dongle. Um, Open DMX are typically less expensive, have less bells and whistles inside them. I don't know the difference of every them, every single one of them, that is, but uh, I do know that this runs off of Open DMX. So I'm going to click OK and I'm going to save the setup. That is all there is needed in order to make this dongle activated. Number one, you plugged it in. Number two, you go to Device Manager and you check here for it. And number three, you go into X Lights and you add a USB. Uh, and then you go through the steps I just walked you through. Now, the, the final thing is, as of right now, let me go back to the website here and show you the picture. Um, if you look at this picture, you'll notice there's two LEDs. Currently, I haven't done anything yet, but this is the only LED that is uh, that is turned on is this green one that's right here by the plug-in. The uh, red designates that uh, or uh, indicates that there is DMX being output or data signal is being run through the FTDI chip and is ready to output through the output over here. Currently, like I said, this is the only one that's turned on and working. This one here is not turned on at the moment. And to turn on or to activate this, all we need to do is go in here and click this output to lights. And as soon as I do, now I have and and in mine on mine right now it's kind of flicking flickering really really quickly, uh, kind of fast, but. Uh, but it's it's pretty much a red. It's showing that that it's actively sending out data. So as far as I'm concerned, um, I, this has been a successful test. If you were to to go to SparkFun and purchase this dongle or this uh, adapter, then uh, you too can be able to run your uh, legacy LOR controllers, uh, your legacy I'm sorry, your uh, legacy DMX controllers. Uh, a single universe of pixels could be run off of this with a uh, DMX uh, pixel controller. And um, and once again, this is very inexpensive to jump into the world of pixels and RGB if this is something that you're interested in doing. So, uh, folks, thanks for watching and take care. If you have any questions, feel free to send them my way, and uh, we'll talk to you real soon. Thanks for watching and uh, take care.